I'm glad everybody could come today. Um, my name is Dennis Orlowski, and you probably have seen my work, you know, all over Hamtramck. You know the painting on the wall in the children's section? I did that. And did you see that King Arthur panels in, inside? You did those brown paintings with knights and swords? Oh, yeah. I did that. And that picture that's hanging down now of the Madonna and Child? I did that. Famous. And Pope Park, where that Pope statue is, do you know where that is? There's a mural there along the wall near Jet's Pizza. That painting along the wall near Jet's Pizza? I did that. Did you see those also? Yes. Now, uh, here's why I'm here. I did a mural in another state, the state of Indiana, and I had a book made, and I showed it to the director of this library, and she said, you've got to come in here and talk about this. Sell your book. You got $25? All together? No. We'll let them in. Okay. <laughs> All right, so this, uh, I'm going to talk about this book at the end. This is how I did a mural with all these children. Uh, first, before I get to that, and before I get to show you all the a lot of paintings I've done, I'm going to talk about uh, why I became an artist and how important it is to start early, okay? Okay, this is a picture of my son when I was 18. I used a mirror and I just painted. It took a long time. That's how I looked. Still looks like it, right? Alright. This is one I did a couple years ago. Like this and the mirror. Now, see, my hand is reversed, right? In the mirror, it's opposite. This is my left hand, but in the mirror, this is like, right now it looks like my right. And everybody likes this one. I put more paint on it, not more expressive and everything. Now, because this, of my early training in Hamtramck, I became an artist. When I was 14, I started painting at home. My father had a business in Hamtramck, a bar, a restaurant. And uh, he saw me painting in the basement. I was painting all kind of pictures from magazines and everything with oil paint. And then he said, you know, like your, your parents, they see you got some talent, they want you to succeed. And he went to school with the son of a, a painter, a Serbian painter, who had uh, lived in Europe and was trained in painting, all kind of things. Who had come to this country in World War I. He painted opera curtains, you know, behind the stages. There were used to be operas all over the place. And uh, he was did churches, and he was very skilled. Uh, his son, this painter's son, became a, a decorator in rich, rich, rich houses later. So my, but he, uh, he had, at the time, he was 72, and he lived in Hamtramck. My father, his name was Kleda Popovich. My father arranged that uh, he would pay for lessons, that I would take lessons on Thursday, and on Saturday. I had drawing lessons on Thursday and uh, painting lessons on Saturday. I'd have to come all the way to Detroit to Hamtramck. Sometimes I got a ride, sometimes it would take three buses. Now back then buses were easier to take, but still, three buses. And I would come and he would paint, and I would do something and he would paint again, and then back and forth and he would go over and he would talk to me and I would be like, I'm young, right? Teenager, 16 or 17, 16. And he would be painting like this and he's 72 and my back would be killing me standing up and he'd be going like this, you know, and I go, what's holding him up? The art is holding him up, it's intensity. So I would, I came for three, four years, the Hamtramck. Sundays it would be so cold, I would wait for the bus I didn't bring earmuffs. My ears nearly froze. I didn't know how cold it was. And he put heat things on my ears and everything. But I got good. 
and I got a scholarship to go to New York City, mainly because of his training, I think. And in New York, I painted great, you know what New York City is? That's a big apple. I saw Broadway shows and everything. I came back from New York, and then I painted some pictures. Um, I painted, uh, you know Kowalski? Anybody know Kowalski? When you think of Kowalski, what do you think? <laughs> yeah. The guy that owned the company, I painted him. I, I painted uh, Jimmy Hoffa. Anybody know Jimmy Hoffa? I painted this judge pose for me. I painted, then my father said, uh, son, you better, you can, you're painting now, but you're not making a lot of money. You better get a job or join the army. Something like that. Because he's Polish, and Polish people, they got to make, make money. So I joined the army, and then I went to Europe, and I studied. Uh, but, but the main thing is what I learned from this teacher was drawing. I'm going to draw something here. Let's see. <coughs> we have a lot of children. What's that? The square. It could be a cube, though. What's the difference? What's a cube? Three dimensional. But you can't tell from here. The only way. If you can't see the top or the side, you can't tell if that's a cube or not. So let's say I look on the top and off to the side. So I, I do this. And now it looks like a cube, right? And if I wanted to look just from the top, I could draw it like this. It would be like a cube that way. Or if I look from the bottom, Like that. I'm looking from the bottom and off to the side. And uh, if light comes this way from one direction, like the only light you see is coming at this angle, 45 degree angle, the light would hit here first, it would here, hit here second, and it would hit here third. Now I learned that. So anything I, I make, I know how the light goes. I, 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 I learned by this. Now what is this? Anybody? Circle. Okay, now how am I going to make that into a, uh, if that's a ball, how would I make that into a sphere? I know that if I made lines, it won't, you know, you can make lines like this and go like this. But that's got all those lines over. You need the shading. So if I say the light comes this way, it hits here, and then it's sh it's shaded here. Looks like a egg now, but uh, so that looks like it's round, right? And artists from the the past always would use light mainly from one source, one area, not light here, here because your form gets diffused. Now, even when I was in grade school, when I was at eighth grade, anybody here eighth grade? Past eighth grade? What grade? Seven. Well, let's say one more year you're in eighth grade. I'm looking at art books and I'm, I'm admiring these great painters that, that were famous for, for hundreds of years ago. And I, liked to, I wanted to paint like that. And they would do this, but I didn't know how to do this. But I figured it out in this teacher Mr. Popovich taught me. So I did that when I was very young. By the time I was 18, I was a pro. Well, I was good. And I knew that. And it's been in, in me ever since. And that's why I can paint these mirrors. And just by doing those things, I can draw anything. I learned about, say I want to draw a figure, like myself. I know that there's a skull, there's the rib cage, there's the pelvis. This is what a ribs are, but it's this shape, and there's pelvis, this is this part here. There's a, a distance of one hand between this here and this here. Your 
hands come off here. Here's your shoulder blades. Your legs come down like this. That's the skull there. Like I know that, and I know how to move that in any position. So when I draw somebody, I automatically go this first. I can put the muscles on, you know, automatically because everybody generally has the same amount of muscles. I mean, everybody's body is generally the same. So I know that. But when I draw a characterization of somebody, uh, I have to think that first. So let's say volunteer. Somebody brave? Come on, get up here, come here. OK, stand right there so I can see you. Stand right about there. I want you to get into a pose. Like, come on. I mean, don't just go like. Okay, and then have your head look this way. Now hold this for a second. All right. Now, so if I was drawing her, I would draw this. I see how the rib cage goes here. Now her hips are one leg is higher up there. This one goes down like this. This hand goes like this. This hand goes like that. I got that right now. Now, if I was drawing her, I'd just go, and I know the clothes go over this, but that doesn't bother me because I know where everything goes. Now, I already have her set, so I have her like this, and then she's got that expensive sweater on, all that stuff like that. Okay? So I got her. Boom. And so if she moves up, I still got her, because I know that stuff. Now, let's say her face. Come forward a little bit. Let's say, put your face uh, now. Uh, head. I know for a fact that all heads, human being heads, the eyes are in the middle, you've got a nasal cavity here, you've got your eye sockets here, and you've got your jawline comes like this, and your teeth like that. It's wider up here, and if you've got a side view, it's got to come like this. I just know this. All artists, not all of them, but they should know that. Okay, so when she's posing, I see this first. Okay, hold still. Look, eyes in the middle. Now it's down like that. Now it's like that. And then let's see. Keep your eyes in one place. Eyes have to fit here. faster in a photograph and I can get I can zero in on what I want and it had, the art that I do has a more human, uh, humanity now you got to do this very young you can't learn this 18 is too old if you're 18 it's over in a way you can but it's, it's all over for speed so I don't you know you don't think okay now If I was teaching school, 
which I did teach. And I wanted to teach you about drawing an object. Well, first of all, you know, behind the eye socket here, your eye is like a round ball. You know that? I remember at a basketball game at school, one guy got his eye poked out and it hung out. No one told him that his eye was out. He took him away and then some guy said, your eyeball's out of your head. And he started ah, screaming. But this, and it feels like a hard boiled egg if you touch it. You know what a hard boiled egg is? It's kind of squishy. But it's a ball shape. So you know that the light's coming this way. It would be shaded like this. And you've got, what is this called in here? Pupil. And you got this, what is that black thing in there? Retina? Right? That's an eyeball. So when you draw, you know the shape. If I took, a, if I didn't have my bones, all my skin would just be flat on the ground, right? Because your skin goes over what's underneath, right? Uh, so this is round and it does have form. So your eyelid goes over this way, and especially because it's round. And then the other one just barely touches the bottom like that. Here's your eyelid. You never see an eye like this unless you see a ghost. You know? You shouldn't see it in white here or white here. And then your eyelashes go like that. And your eyebrow goes like that. But I because I know it's round underneath, I give it more form. Okay? And that's a lesson. Now, if I wanted to impress you with that lesson, I'll be doing a time, okay? <laughs> right. I'll tell a story so you would remember. It's great. So you remember eyes. Okay. This is a, a Greek story. This is 500 BC. They told the story. 500 BC? What? That means before Christ. If Christ was born in zero, everything before uh, Christ is like one, two, three, four, five. They're going 500 years this way. Got it? Everything after Christ is what? Called what? What's that mean? Wrong. It's Latin, it means Agno Domini. Uh, you're a god. I don't know how they got BC. I'm not sure BC means that either. But Agno Domini, AD. Everything after Christ. Smart. Smart. So, okay. Here's, here's a story about eyes, so you remember. And, uh, what I tell the kids at school. Okay. Uh, back then, everybody believed that. The gods were up in heaven, and there are good gods and bad gods. The king of all the gods was what? Yeah. No, this is Greece. Greece. His name is Zeus. Oh. And Zeus was up in heaven, and he and uh, people would pray to him, and he had the he could throw lightning bolts, and he and, and all the gods had birds that were their favorites. What's the strongest bird? Eagle. His bird was the eagle. Now his wife is called Juno. That's the Roman name for her. She's the god of riches. Uh, what? Give me a fancy bird for Juno. What's a fancy bird? Big feathers. Peacock. So she's up there, and her bird is the peacock. Uh, the goddess of wisdom, what do you think her bird is? Wisdom. Owl. Owl. You're right, an owl. Okay, you catch on, okay? The owl looks, okay, her bird is the peacock. Now, Zeus had a bad habit. 
A lot of times he would look down on earth and if he saw a pretty girl, he would try to go down on earth and kiss and hug her and everything. Now, do you think his wife liked that? Because women don't like that. So Zeus had to hide his shape. He would disguise himself. Sometimes he would come down as uh, golden coins and the girl would be, oh, what's happening? It's actually Zeus with all these golden coins on him. And other shapes. This one day, he saw this one girl under a tree in a bathing suit. And she was really sexy and everything. And he was up, he was up there and he was going like, you know, wah, 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 no, I really wanted to. He came down. Now, he knew he had to hide himself. He came down as a, a dark cloud. And he's kissing her and hugging her. His wife is looking for him, and she can't find him. And she says, where is he? And she goes, I bet he's down on earth. And as she looked down on earth, she saw nothing. It's just a nice, bright, sunny day. Wait a minute. If it's a bright, sunny day, what's this? Dark cloud. Something suspicious. So she comes down on earth to check out this cloud. And now she has magical powers, and she decides that she's going to make that cloud disappear. But Zeus is a few seconds faster. Guys are a little bit faster sometimes than girls, sometimes. So when she goes, cloud disappear, and Zeus is hugging and kissing, she sees that Zeus has to change the girl, Io, First thing that pops into his mind, he changes her into uh, kissing. She sees him kissing a what? A what? No, give me a female bull. Cow. And she goes, What are you doing with this cow? I said, It's a beautiful cow. I thought I just had to hug it. That's just a cow. And, and, and he says, yeah, just a cow. He said, you don't mind giving me that cow as a present, do you? All right. So he gives her the cow, goes back up to heaven, and uh, she's watching this cow. Now the girl's a cow. She's going like, let me out of here. But all that comes out is, mmm. And uh, she, but Juno cannot wait there all day, so she calls a friend of hers, somebody that can watch this cow. And, and, and he comes. His name is Argus. And she said, if anything happens, if this cow changes, if Zeus comes down here with this cow again, you call me. Day or night, I want you to watch. Now, he says he will. Now, he can watch day and night this cow. And nothing can stop him. And he doesn't even sleep because he has one, two, He has a hundred eyes all over his head. In the back, the front, a hundred eyes. When some eyes are sleeping, other eyes are open. So you can't even sneak about. Now, Zeus sees that. But he wants to change that, that girl back, you know, to a girl. He wants to change that cow back. So he can't, he's got to get rid of him. But how can he do anything? Because he'll signal his wife and he'll be in trouble. So he calls so he calls the fastest uh, god. He calls the fastest picture of God. Uh, what's the fast god, you know? What's the fastest planet around the sun? What's the closest planet inside track? Mercury. Anybody? Mercury. 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 He comes and Mercury said and, and Zeus says to Mercury. If you can get rid of him, I'll give you anything you want. See him? So Mercury comes down on Earth and disguises himself as a singer of songs, a guy that can play a little harp and tell stories. And he walks up to him and he's playing his song. He says, do you mind if I play you a song while you're waiting here? And, and Argus, Argus is here. He says, sure. I don't mind. I've been here for a week watching this cop. I'm bored, but I'm watching. So he starts telling him a story. And he starts telling him 
this and this, and then one time there's this other guy. It's, all, it's almost as boring like school, you know what I mean? And pretty soon, all the eyes disappear. I mean, they close. All the eyes close. And as soon as the last eye is closed, Mercury takes out a sword and he cuts the head off of Argus. The head lands on the ground and bounces, and all the eyes fall off the head. And all these eyeballs on the ground. He called, uh, Argus called Zeus. Zeus comes down, changes the, the cow back into a girl. The girl runs off, shakes hand with Mercury, takes off. Juno hasn't heard from Argus in a while. She keeps that comes down to Earth and she sees her friend with his head cut off, dead, and all these eyeballs on the ground. She scoops up all these eyeballs in her eyes. She cries because her friend died for her. And then she goes back to heaven and she goes, I'm going to put these eyeballs and keep them close to me. So I'll always remind you of my friend Argus. Where do you think she put those eyeballs? What? What do you think she could put them? Oh. Oh. Where? In the peacock's tail. So that's why peacocks have eyes in their tail. That's the story. People believe that back then. I mean, now it's 500 years. <laughs> That's 500 years. Now, if I was a class, I'd tell for your sign, I'm going to have you draw a head. I want you to put 100 eyes, as many eyes as you can on that head. Okay, you got 20 minutes. That's, that's just a story. Okay, now I'm going to show you some of my uh, artwork. Uh, where is, uh, does anybody know how to work this? I got it. Just tell me okay. Uh, this is uh, my presentation. Okay, start. First one. That's me, right? I'm artist, muralist, teacher. I'm a public artist. I like to do things for the public. I don't sit in a little room and paint things just for myself. I'm, I'm creative. Oh. Okay. Now these are some paintings. Now this is in Mexico City. This is a fresco. Anybody been to Mexico City? You have? Mexico City. This is in, Me in Mexico. Uh, this is a fresco, it's about 12 feet by something. And you ever see that picture before? Yeah, come on, it's in the outside now. That's me painting. Okay. Uh, here's some of my murals. This was in Detroit Historical Museum. And these are, okay, get another one. Now, this is me in the Army. Scratch troops. Combat, all right. I was in Germany for two and a half years, and I saw Europe, and then I was in the field with the tanks and everything. I was no uh, sissy artist or anything. I was with a rifle and everything. Okay. There I am. There I am. That was like Lieutenant Colonel. I would do stuff like this and that, and also I'd do maps, yes. Yeah, yeah. That's the U.S. Army. And uh, I even named this tank, tank, tank after my mother. See that? Helen. I can hit it. That's me. See those tanks? That's me. I was cold that day. That's an M14 expert. Okay? Now that's a mess hall. That's like where you eat in a big cafeteria. You have big cafeterias in your school? Well, this is a big cafeteria in the Army. These are all the chairs and everything. They had a big wall. They said, could you paint us our symbol, Courage Conquer, our insignia? I said, okay. Of course, I added all this stuff, too, because I like knights. All right. And these are some details. War and peace. And uh, so I'm about 21 years old when I did this. And I, just, I went to Paris, and I saw stuff, and I incorporated it on the, in these barracks. Okay? There I am. Good. Wow. And this is another, I like knights, see I made those things. This is in the field, I put Hannibal Crossing the Alps on the other side of a map board. You know Hannibal Crossing, you know Hannibal? You do? No. 
famous Carthaginian. Okay. And this is in Mexico City. See, so what a nice place. This is San Carlos Art Academy. And the back wall is this fresco. This is like a combination of plaster and mine. Okay. That's what I looked like in Mexico City. And this guy was preparing the wall. You work down because you got to scrape it up and plaster it. And then you put the drawing on and you punch holes in the drawing and then you hit the powder and then you uh, got the drawing. See, this is all prepared for this drawing. Okay. There I am. Now, if you go to Mexico City, it's still there. This is 1976. And it's still there at the Arctic. You know why it's still there? Usually, if you paint it pretty good, they'll leave it alone. I put my picture over another woman's floating eyeballs and everything. It's crap. But this one, because I put so much good stuff. And you know, you talk about all these young artists there. Most of the young artists were putting, like, not like spray painters do, putting strong colors and everything and ah, yelling, like rap music. And I did this, and they go, but it was good, and it's subtle, right? It's traditional, and they go, "What's the idea? What are you trying to do?" You know, like this yelled more than all their yelling, because that's all you know how to do when you're a kid, right? Until you learn something, yell. Well, you're loud. Okay. Now this is. Uh, I went to Highland Park Community College. That's been closed since the '90s. I did African murals there on Africa. And uh, these were in the hallways because I wanted to do them and they gave me some stipend. And so you can see this is coming up a stairway right here. And that's above the stairway. Okay. And this is down the stairway, Nigeria. And I would draw and I would put portraits of students here uh, and people's faces in the mural. Just like I did here, you know, I drew the girl. I would use combinations. Okay. That's Highland Park. It's kind of caved in now. It's barricaded up. But those murals are still there. Okay. Now these are some portraits I do. If, I, if you hired me to paint your portrait, you know, these are, this girl's not Polish, but I dressed her up like that. That's a Polish girl. Okay. Now this is this judge. I'm 19 years old, and this judge, my dad knows this guy. He posed for me. This is Frank Shemansky. David Shemansky is his son. He's, he's uh, on that auction of all that property helping uh, Matovich right now. <laughs> he'll, probably, he'll probably be the next treasurer, right? Take his place, right? This was in David Shemansky's, he, hanging in his David Shemansky's court, probably downtown, city county building. Wow. 1963. I both hated that from life. How much money did I get? Zero. Yeah, like uh, French. But that was a great it's, it's a great board. No, no. What's that? No, nothing. Okay, next. Anybody know where that is? Steve Kowalski. Well, if you can get in there and go up the stairs, you can see that portrait of Steve Kowalski, grandson that made Kowalski sausage what it is. Because way back in Hamtramck, there used to be about five sausage companies. Javarski, Kowalski, a couple others. He made it, he modernized it and kept it perfect. That's why it is. I painted him. Uh, for my dad. That's from a photograph. Though. And it's hanging there still. Okay. And that's the Madonna Chesnohova. You guys know what who this is? No. Uh, make him a saint for you, so. Pope John Paul. And uh, they called me up to paint this for them, for the Catholic Church. He said, would you paint this big banner of something? how I ever got it up there. And I said, I'll do it on the phone. And then they said, we can't pay you anything. What? But I realized I was a teacher, I was getting money, so I bought the canvas and I painted it. And, you know. And they always say that, volunteer. 
can't, they don't have any money, don't they? No, but the poem, I mean, this is cool, all right? And I, can, and I can do it because I'm trained early and I, bam, and I realize what's involved. Okay, now these are some schools that I've done murals in. Um, let's see, well these are just a few of them. And we're gonna go to a couple, Wood Creek, uh, Farm to Hills, Tusick, and Visser, because of this situation. Okay, next. Now here's what happened. This is the Just So Stories, uh, this is Wood Creek School. Two planes, uh, let's say a family from India, now, you know Bangladesh, right? Bangladesh is on one part of India, it's Islamic, and you've got Pakistan on the other, Islamic, and then India in the middle is mostly Hindu? Okay. okay. People from India, Hindu, uh, from the suburbs, Troy, Stoning Heights, they decide to go back on a trip to India. The men go in one plane, the women and children go in the other. Planes take off, the plane with the women and children blows up. A bomb was put in it. They're all dead. <laughs> all the fathers are like, my family's gone. They come back and they come to the school where the children went and they ask, could you, do, I want to give money to the school in remembrance of my child. And they, they, at first the principal said, well, buy a TV make a lamp. No, I want art. They, I want a painting. So I got contacted, more or less, somebody told me, okay? And so I see in this library something that has to do with India. Now, to just Kipling, he is a British author that lived in India, and he wrote animal stories. So I said, that fits. So I painted how the uh, armadillo got his, like this, it's a combination of a turtle, and uh, hedgehog, and how uh, the, the elephant got its nose. He's, he normally had a little short nose, and then he stuck it to drink water, and a crocodile pulled it. And that's how he got a long nose. And then how the elephant, the whale got baleen. You know what baleen is? Some elephants don't. Some whales don't have teeth. They have this kind of web stuff. How this whale swallows this guy in a raft, and he can't get out, so he cuts up the raft and uh, and starts a fire inside the whale. The whale opens his mouth and he swims out and then sticks the wood slats in the whale's mouth but he can't be swallowed. That's the story. Next slide. That's the, that shows how the nose got pulled out by the crocodile. Okay, next slide. Now this is part of the jungle book. This is another school. Because once I do that one, another fa father comes to me and says, I want my son. In the, in the, I want to see them in, I want my children in this. Now, he had, I went to his house and he had this toy lion in his house. He said, he kept it because it was his son's. When the son was about to go on, on the other plane with the mother, he said, give me that, you're too old for that. And he kept it. And so he had this toy, this toy with him. So I put that in the mural. And this is the, are these, uh, Names, uh, Indian names? Anu. Well, that's what a name. Here's the daughter and here's the mother. Okay, next slide. And this is the boy. Now, Mowgli. See, Sheer, Hakai. That's uh, Hakai. You got that one, but look, it's Sheer. In India. Sheer Khan. And um, and here's the boy. See, I drew the boy. I, I got a picture of the boy's face, and I had someone else uh, pose uh, their son, you know, and I made him look like that. But I put a leaf so he's not, you know, butt naked. Okay. Next slide. Mother wolf. How about the snake? Ka? No, shop. Ah. The, the crocodile is jacala. No. And uh, these are foxes. Yeah. Dio, well, oh, okay. Different. <clears throat> this is yeah. a Susik school. Okay, next. And this is Grissom school. This is like the creation of the world in this school. The father said, I want to put myself in the mural, my wife and son and daughter. 
The people at the school, he did not say, well, you just can't pay money and do that. You know, we'll have everybody doing that. This is a public school. So I had to figure out how to do this. So this is on one side, the creation of the world. Okay, next. And it goes around dinosaurs and everything. And then I put, that's the family I put in there. But the school is Gus Grissom School. You know, anybody know who Gus Grissom was? He died, he's an astronaut. So I put Gus Grissom in there, then I put school kids in there, then I put the principal in there, I put the librarian in there. So I got them all in outer space. Starts in outer space, ends in outer space. Next. That's part of the creation. This is like ice age, fire, okay. There I am. I haven't changed a bit, really. Look. And this is like the start of it. Okay, next. This is a, I did, this is a poster of a famous, uh, I can sell, anybody want to buy these posters? Uh, History of Poland? Give me a deal on this. Uh, oh. Okay, next. Now, I've done some stuff in the city. These are some of the floats. You know, Polish Day Parade, anybody gone to that? Well, those floats that, I work on those floats. That's me and the mayor. Who's voting for the mayor? <laughs> That's me there. No. Okay, next. Now, hit, how many have been to the community center down by the park? Did you ever see this, this mural? You play pool? Yeah. Okay, that's me. I, I painted that. That took a long time. The history of ham tramming. Okay, next. Now, this is a, I get a call. Do you see all these spray painter guys out here spraying paint? Yeah. You know, like. I mean, so what? I was asked to do a public mural, and I 55 kids. This is uh, uh, from the neighborhood's altar and map. Next slide. Animals. Isn't that nice? Wouldn't that be nicer than that spray painting crap you see around? Yeah. I think so. Yeah. There I am with them. They tore it down because they had to put a, a shopping mall in there. But uh, next. That's all the kids. That's me. Wouldn't you, uh, wouldn't you think that they would ask me to do something in this city? Well, occasionally they do. This is a nice animal. Okay, next. Anyone ever see this? It's not a restaurant. Yeah. This is in the library. Next. That's the size of it. In a restaurant, yeah. Polish cafe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty nice. The bricks match the restaurant. It fits in. It doesn't blow your mind. They wanted that. Of course, they couldn't hang it. I had to hire a uh, company to do it. Next. These are some night pictures. This is way back with Popovich. And this is me with a sword. I like knights and, and, and fighting. Anybody know sword work? Anybody fence or anything? No. I do. Next. Next. Okay, here's some libraries that I've done. Hamtramck, you know, the wall. Yeah. Clinton McComb. $20 million library. Anyone's ever been there? Yeah. East Point, right there. Next. This is now, we come to this about the book. Okay, this is in Indiana. This is the one I just finished. Okay, uh, as it says in the book, I went to this to visit this lady. Now I'm I'm divorced and single and everything. I had painted hey, hey, I had painted this lady for her husband in 1986. Remember 1986? No. <laughs> but here we were. Okay, I guess not. <laughs> it was a long time ago. I had painted her portrait, five hundred dollars, and he was an engineer, and then everything. And I painted her portrait, and we were friends. And I knew him, and knew his wife, and his kids, and everything. Had dinner at their house a lot of times. They got divorced. She moved to Indiana, and I was going to Chicago on a visit, and I stopped in to see her. They're like friends, but guess what? All the years, and she's single, and I'm single. Guess what? Oh. Oh. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's 
<laughs> we fell in love. And uh, she worked part-time at this library. And I would see the walls are very gray and nothing's on them. I said, I can do murals. And I kept saying that, and I made some sketches, and then they called me in and they said to me, now it, it, the library is bigger than this library, but your library is like your children's section. It's a big library. Oh. <laughs> so, so and they have big walls. And I, so they said to me, we, would, we, we consider you painting this, but we want you to paint each all three walls, and the walls are 35 feet by 10 feet. This is 10 feet, this is about 10 feet, and 35 feet. This is about, what is it, 25 feet? And another 30. 10 feet on that. Three walls, all animals, and I go, this is going to be hardly any money. And they said, they said, you can't do it? And I said, I can do anything. I'll do it with whatever money you can get. And they sold tickets. Uh, for kids to be in it, you pay a dollar to get in a raffle, you might be in the mural, and uh, candy bars, and whatever. Did that make money? Yeah, and, uh, and you know how much money they raised after two and a half years? Ten thousand. Ten thousand. Ten thousand dollars. That's nothing, that's not some change there. Of course, I, st I stayed at this lady's house, and I ate about seven thousand dollars worth of food, so. But here is the, one was the ocean, one was uh, uh, Indiana, and one was Africa. Now this is the underwater one, okay? Now let me show you. You saw how I drew here, right? Yes. Well, this is what I did for this girl over here. I drew the girl. I drew the body. Remember how I drew the body? Then I drew her face, and then I drew her hands, and everything like that. And look, this is me drawing her. I'm saying, move your book like that, and I'm drawing her face there. Then I put it on a large sheet of paper, put it on the wall, and there she is on the wall, like that. Okay? And this is what I did. I have to figure this out first on paper. See this here? This is here. One inch to a foot, and here's my color sketch. I have to figure out the colors here and there. And then I can paint up there. You just don't start painting on a wall. It's too hard. I can do it. It would take forever, but my training gives me that speed. Okay? Next. Now this is another one. This is, uh, oh. Before I do that, here's the actual drawing I did of the girl, and I put uh, charcoal on the back and I pressed it on the wall. This takes a while, you know, and I fit it right in there, and then I paint it. Okay? Now this is the back wall. This is a huge wall. Here's my design for this. And I have all these kids. Now these kids, they put their, their parents pay a dollar, they put the ticket in, and they got picked, okay? First I got all girls, and then they had another raffle for the boys. Can you see, here's the water tower, here's the water tower on the mural. And it shows me drawing this boy sitting on this park bench. Where's the park bench in here? In the middle, right here. They have those around the outside of the library. And you can't see this too well there because they got bookcases and that, but look at all that work on this, right? You just don't start painting. Okay, next. Next. That's the African part. This is painted. See the elephants with the thing down there? Now, see this girl here? Her family gave a Lego table. Anybody know what Legos are? Legos? <coughs> yeah. So I put, see that? What's that animal there? A Lego animal. A giraffe. Right. I put a Lego giraffe there because there's a giraffe there. And you can see the details. This, you know, girl posing with that. Next. Now here's the book. So get out your money. I can take checks. Don't worry. Don't worry about that. This is the book. 
It tells all that I've been telling you. How many chapters? Not only chapters, one big chapter with a lot of pictures. Shows the drawings, kids posing. It only cost you $25 a piece, so that's one, two, three, four times one. It's $100 right here. I am making big bucks today. And here, you know that lady that I went to see? The girl. The girl. Yeah, I painted, and she got the boards, and I met her again. Uh, guess what happened? No, no. She's a <laughs> Whoa! Oh, wow. She already had children, I had children. But I, I got her a uh, ring. And guess where I went? What's the one on TV? If you went to buy a ring anywhere, where would you go? Which one? No. Jerry's. Jerry's. $2,000. And here's the dedication I have in the book. Get this now, because this shows how romantic I am. Uh, where I'm thinking her. Uh, first and last, I wish to thank Susan Jackson, who's responsible for introducing me to Lowell Library and who has brought happiness, art, and love into my life that is reflected in the murals on the walls. Isn't that nice? So, anyways, I've got these books. I can take orders for 20 bucks. Uh, we're we're, we're going to revise them, or you can buy this, these copies, which cost a lot of money because I only made up so many for the students. Only the students, the, the children here, I wanted to put their names in the mural. But the lady, it was like a children's director. But she wasn't even a librarian. You know, who's the children's uh, librarian here? Who does the new uh, movies here? Anya. Anya, right? Anya, yeah, Anya. Uh, but the one in this library was real rotten. She wouldn't let me do it. So I made this book for the kids. So, yeah. So I, I paid. And I did this with the Maureen, this other lady. Uh, let's see. Any, yeah, yeah. Next, uh, any more? That's it? That's it. So guess what? If you don't have the money, because you guys probably didn't bring any money, you can order like 20 bucks and you get a nice book signed by an artist. Isn't that great? Any questions? How much is your signature? My signature? About a thousand dollars. What? You can buy it on a book. You can buy the book. And you can go to any gas station and get a thousand <laughs> okay, any questions? All right, thank you very much.